First, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, everyone. This is Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler, and as always, we appreciate you joining us. We are live streaming here from the Fox 12 Oregon newsroom, as we do every weekday, starting around 1 p.m., going throughout the afternoon and covering a wide range of different subjects. And we thank you for being a part of this show. And uh, since we are live streaming here on the Fox 12 Oregon app, uh, that's also a place where you can go to afterward and watch all of our segments, whether that's at kptv.com or on the Fox 12 Oregon YouTube channel as well. We get to do these longer form segments where we get to talk about some of the important things that are going on, including this, the Bonneville Fish Ladder. There is a new fish ladder on the Washington side of the Bonneville Dam. This is an $8 million project that's been in the works for a while. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers have been working on this, and we got to speak to Aaron Kovalchuk, who was in charge of this new fish ladder project. And in particular, it is designed to help Lamprey make it up to the upper side of the Columbia there past that dam. A very important fish species. If you've never seen what they look like, you're you're going to get to see what they look like. Um, but uh, also, uh, you know, really important for them, for the environment and culturally for as well to make it up there. So we talk about all of that in this interview. So let's go ahead and go to it. Thank right you now. very much for having time to talk to us today about this. I'm excited to learn about it. And to that extent, you know, could you let everybody know about this fish ladder project and what's been going on there at Bonneville? And and just to give everybody kind of the, you know, the, the backstory of to where we're at right now. Sure. For years, we we found from research that lamprey were struggling to make it up the top portion of the Bonneville Washington Shore fish ladder. So we redesigned the top section to make it easier for lamprey to pass. In addition, this is going to be great for salmon too. This is a nice, straightforward, streamlined. Uh, redesign so the flow doesn't um, eddy in circle and cause problems. And this is something that is, it's been in the works for quite a while too, this project, is that right? Yes, that's correct. We've been designing it for a couple of years and the construction happened this winter. We started in December and we finished the uh, construction of the weirs um, the first week of March. So brand new, you know, they're in action for uh, all of the fish to take part in it. And, you know, you mentioned just some of the structural changes. I wondered if we could talk about that just for a minute. You know, comparatively, you mentioned the previous one would have eddies and things that probably, I would assume, make it more difficult for a fish to go up the ladder. Um, and, and this this more streamlined approach, when people are looking at it, what are some of the differences maybe they would notice in how this ladder is put together? Yeah, the original design had an S shape and the flow was was very fast. Uh, this new design has more of a streamlined, um, straightforward flow to it. And so when lamprey come up, they are able to use their burst speed, go through these um, fast points, and then there's um, more of slack water where they can rest. And in fact, we've uh, installed some rest boxes in the in the fish ladder. That and so this is going to be beneficial for for a lot of these different species of fish that are coming up. And you know, something I just realized I didn't I didn't do here at the beginning. Uh, but just to explain to everybody, what is the I guess necessity of a fish ladder? What is the purpose that it serves? The fish ladder is how adult fish make it up, um, make it from the uh, tailwater of the dam up to the forebay. So this is how they pass through the dam. And this is something they would naturally be doing. You know, if the, if the dam weren't there, this is that naturally they need to get from one section to the other. Correct. They need to get from the bottom of the dam to the top of the dam. And this is how adult fish go through. And for the Pacific lamprey in particular, you know, there's a lot, as you mentioned, there's a lot of species of fish. There's salmon. There's all kinds of ones that, that are using this. But the Pacific lamprey were one of the ones that were in mind for this. And can we just go into a little more detail of, um, you know, what the Pacific lamprey are, I guess, as a species of fish and why it's important to make sure that they're getting from the tailwaters, as you mentioned, up to the upper part of the dam? Yeah, lamprey have been around for about 400 million years. They're a very old fish. They're a jawless fish. Um, they are very culturally significant to Native American tribes in our area. 
uh, and for these, you know, for these two reasons, you know, lamprey are very significant in our area. They're, um, you know, every, almost everything eats lamprey. <laughs> you know, they're a very uh, biologically um, significant species in, in the river system. So it's very important that we make sure that lamprey can pass through the dams. And that's serving, yeah, as you mentioned, a, a number of reasons there. Culturally, number one there, uh, as you mentioned, but also biologically. So all of the other, uh, I guess, in, when it comes to the food chain of the Columbia River, the Pacific lamprey, are, it sounds like, are very important to that. Very important, yes. That's a great way of putting it. And for this, you know, do you have, uh, granted, this just went into effect, but how much do you think this is supposed to increase the numbers as far as lamprey that are able to make it across? Or maybe there's a better metric to look at than that, but you do think this is going to, to help serve that purpose a lot better? We definitely think that, but we're also doing research to verify. Uh, we will be looking at how many fish are able to pass through this area. We also have uh, embedded pit tag antennas, which are the little chips. Uh, I think you've probably heard of them before that are uh, that we insert into fish, and we can make sure that they are passing through the ladder. That's great. So you'll be able to actually track them as they're going through and see how many make it. Mm -hmm. We'll be tracking them with hydroacoustic tags, and also we will have the um, pit antennas to track fish. Wow, so that's a couple of different ways. That That's a whole other interview. We may have to, <laughs> to learn about that because that's that's really fascinating. So you will be, though, tracking all of this data and, and seeing how they're coming through. And as far as, you know, for the public to actually come and see this, I know one of the things I've always loved to do is going to Bonneville and, you know, seeing some of the different displays there, seeing some of the different uh, fish that you have in the fish ladder. Is that something that people can go and see as well now with this new one? They can, and it's open now. If they go to the visitor center on the Washington Shore side, uh, they will see the new design that we have built. They will also uh, see a lamprey rest box that is uh, in one of the windows, um, and you will be able to see when lamprey come and, and rest in that box, and you'll see their little tails sticking out. Lamprey season, though, doesn't start uh, until about June. so. I would wait a couple of months if you want to see a lamprey. Okay, so June, coming this June, you can see some lamprey going through there. Um, are there fish that come through right now regularly, or is it even the right season for it? Yeah, um, salmon passage has started. And in fact, I've already seen um, a couple of steelhead using the ladder. Nice, so that's that's gotta be satisfying just from your end, you know, seeing this in use, this brand new ladder and actually seeing you know, some of our native fish utilizing it. Absolutely. It, yeah, it was really exciting to see the first steelhead go through. <laughs> nice. And that's something, again, that people can go take a look at and, uh, and witness themselves. And anything else that you think is important just for people to know about this project and what Bonneville is doing in general? Yeah, it's, it's just important to know that, um, that the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers spends a lot of time designing and a lot of money constructing these uh, fish passage facilities. We spend a lot of effort to make sure that we're doing the best we can for fish passage. And this is satisfying both, you know, that need for power and the ser things, the dam services, but also balancing that with the needs of the, you know, biological and, and uh, environmental needs as well, sounds like. Yes. Yeah, covering both of those. Well, thank you very much, you know, for, for joining us here today to talk about this. I really appreciate it and giving everybody a better understanding of that project that's just gone in. And congratulations on the completion of it. And now I guess I need to make a trip out there to, to go see it in person, um, which <laughs> I'll, I'll do soon. So everybody else can as well. Thank you very much for joining us here on Fox 12 Now. Great. Thank you. All right, again, a big thank you to Aaron and the whole team there for joining us to talk about that. Really fascinating stuff, and we appreciate that. And that is, as I mentioned, something that you can go check out yourself. We are live streaming here from the Fox 12 Oregon newsroom, as we do every weekday, starting around 1 p.m. and going throughout the afternoon. We cover all kinds of different longer-form segments and interviews. We can do those deeper dives. Maybe if there's something that you saw on one of our other shows you want to find out from the reporter, a little bit more information. A lot of times there is a lot more that uh, we don't necessarily share on all of the newscasts that we could get into here with a little bit more time. So feel free to send me an email, fox12now at kptv.com, fox12now at kptv.com. If you have some of those things that we'd like to hear about, 
feel free to let me know. I'll see what we can do to get those on for you and have those discussions. But thank you right now for joining us. We do appreciate it. Again, I'm Greg Nibbler, and this is Fox 12 Now.